graduated from my CS degree in May, and um, I started interning at Motorola Solutions in spring 22, and I just started as a full timer um, like three weeks ago. So that's what I do now. I'm a full engineer. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm Katie Cabas. I'm currently a full time employee at Electric Power Engineers. Um, I am, you know, creating an internship program over there as well as um, kind of the office manager in a way. Um, my previous position, when I was an intern here at Research Park, I worked at Amron. Um, I started there spring, no, summer of 2021 um, as an innovations operations uh, intern. Hi everyone, um, I'm Joey Hartz. I'm currently a full-time employee at Grey Bar. Uh, yeah, I help manage our innovation program. So I oversee not only our interns, but then some of the internal things that we've done on like uh, mentorship program internally. Uh, and I also help oversee our projects. In the past in the research park, I've worked for the research park, uh, mainly out of here at EnterpriseWorks. So I spent some time as a uh, front-end development intern, moved into a design role, and then I also uh, just graduated in May coming on from an internship at Gray Bar as a UI UX designer. Yeah, so like I mentioned, I started as a software engineering intern um, in 2022, and um, here is Mr. Um I'm actually from Champaign, um, quite unfortunately, so. Um, one of the reasons I took the job was actually because I wanted the opportunity to be able to like, be here over the summer and see my family and such. And so um, that was an interesting kind of wide position. Um, but I found that, um, especially working with my team and with Craig, who's our site director, um, was something that I really valued. I think that I gave a lot of valuable mentorship. And um, something that I thought was really valuable that um, we had at Rural Solutions was they're very kind of upfront about um, the type of things that I would need to accomplish, and the type of growth that I would have to show to become a full time man, whether here or elsewhere. And so, um, Craig actually helped me a lot individually just talking about you know, how my performance was and where I was lacking and where I was doing well, things like that. And so I found that um, you know, when I started, I really didn't know anything, but over time I, I learned a lot of things and there was like two ways of mentorship and I found that um, I was able to make a lot of progress in terms of my, both my technical acumen um, as well as just you know, becoming a professional um, employee and um, working for people and um, on the side of the team and things like that. And so, that was really valuable to me, and um, you know, enough for me to keep working here and ask for this job. So that was kind of how my experience went over the last year and a half. Um, and I think, yeah, uh, wherever you are in this report, um, one of the things that's really helpful is that you're able to work very closely with the person who's directing your program. A lot of times, we'll have a lot of um, very helpful initiative directive for HJ to create. And so I'm very appreciative of the company and Craig. Um, I would say the main reason that I moved into a full-time position um, was because of networking. So um, I mentioned that I interned at Ameren uh, previously, and now I'm looking at electric power engineers. Um, I was offered a full-time role at Ameren. I didn't really see myself fitting well into that role, so um, I went a different direction. Um, and sometime in this summer, I want to say in like March, my uh, boss, Dr. President Jen Schill, um, he said, hey, like I'm coming to Champagne. We're gonna go out to lunch. And I said, okay, perfect, free food, right? Um, but then he said, but before we do that, um, I'm gonna go visit an old coworker of mine, um, who is uh, Tamara Rosen, uh, Rousen, I believe. Um, and he is the lead at Electric Power Engineers. Um, so if I didn't make that connection, if I didn't network with that other professional, um, I wouldn't have that introduction and I wouldn't have my job today. Um, so I would say networking is definitely the reason that I have this job besides, you know, credentials. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I owe a lot of where I'm at today to the fantastic, like, staff here in the research park. So Laura being, like, one of the most influential people in my, like, very early career still. Um, so yeah, I owe a lot to them. They presented me with opportunities really early on. And, um, I think part of it was also just the willingness to take initiative on different things. And so I would say, you know, part of the reason why I stayed here in the park is, has a lot to do with the community and the people within it. So I think there's really a lot of really great people here. And to echo what you said about networking, I think that's also, you know, another huge opportunity here. So 
Um, you know, the way that I actually found myself into my role was I, I had left the research part for some time, um, but I was looking, you know, I think last fall for a full-time job. I was a undergraduate student at the high school, and so I just went to the high school career fair, um, tried to talk it up with, you know, a lot of the research part companies and, and build that bridge from my experiences here and say, I've been in the research work for a long time. I really enjoy the work that gets done here. And so um, luckily I, I met my current boss and uh, the rest is kind of history moving into an internship and then a full-time role, so yeah. So all of the things that you probably shouldn't do as an intern, I kind of overstepped and did. Um, I feel like it made me stand out and probably sometimes not in the best ways, but I feel like it got me a lot of attention and made people realize that like I was qualified to do things that maybe like, you know, oh hey, an intern shouldn't do that. Well, sorry. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my answer. Give us some examples. Some examples? Oh, yeah. I don't know, every single meeting that I went into, I, I don't really care about what, like who's in what role or or like what the power structure is or like whatever the hierarchy is there, like, I kind of just talk to everybody like they're on the same level as me, which, like, I don't know, I feel like sometimes that's, that's taken the wrong way, especially if you're not in the right room. Um, but I don't know, if you just talk to people like they're on the same level as you and talk to them like you are a professional, that gets you a lot of places pretty quickly, so. Um, I would say, like, not to do is, if, you're gonna, as an intern, you're gonna have a lot of free time, I think. And if you just do what you're told, you're gonna end up with a lot more free time. So I would say what not to do is just do what you're told. Always go the extra mile. So if you find yourself just sitting around, like, playing around on the computer, use that time to uh, find a problem in your company and create a solution for it. And you know, maybe if you're having a one-on-one -on -one with your mentor, be like, oh, you know, I did, I did everything that I was assigned. But also, in my free time, look look at what I found and look at what I created to help solve that. What do you think about that? And then that will kind of open up future doors, maybe some, to something that you're more passionate about. Um, that was something in my career. Um, I was more so a project manager, but I found that we had a not a problem, but you know, a couple of issues with our recruiting process. Um, and I had some free time on my hands, so I developed a, a system to organize that and easily filter candidates. And um, that's kind of how I found my passion for recruiting, for um, making the internship program what it is. So if I didn't, if I just sat around and did what I was told, um, I wouldn't have found my passion. Yeah, um, I also a lot of things that I probably should say. But, um, yeah, kind of going off what you said, I think that. Especially now on the other side, that I'm kind of like recruiting team interns versus when I was an intern myself. I think that um, we get a lot of people who are very competent, but I think that something that I see, especially with interns, and especially when it's not as busy, is that a lot of them are very complacent. Like they're not really looking to learn new things, and you know, that's, that's fun, I guess. And you know, sometimes I wish I had one to do on the office, but I think that um, at some point in my career, especially as a student, you have to think about. Yourself, um, so that you're prepared for the next stage of wherever your life takes you, um, both career wise and professionally related. And so, what that means, I think, is that a lot of times you really have to be, um, have, have a lot of directed towards looking for good feedback, um, thinking about where you need to pause your skills, um, you know, what energy you need to take to become a better employee. And um, something I think I learned a lot is that, um, especially if you're in like, software engineering type world or where you're working in technology, things change really fast. Um, you know, just as technology progresses, um, the technology tech stacks that people are using are going to be really rapidly changing. So a lot of times if you aren't trying to kind of cultivate growth in terms of your technical ability, there will be a time where you really won't be competent for a lot of the things that are really relevant in today's society. And so, um, yeah, there are a lot of stories I've heard over the years about people who are really brilliant at some tech technology in the past, but as time went on, they are really kind of phased out because the needs for the industry were changing really fast. So I think that it's kind of going along with that. There are a lot of resources, um, both online and Years where you can learn um, how to take your technical ability to the next level, and I think those are really important to take advantage of them, especially if you're in a time where you're not as busy um, and you have time to work on these kinds of things. So, my question is pretty basic from your perspective. Uh, what are some differences or you know, um, 
I would say like you know, could share some key points the difference between being an intern and being a full timer in an organization. When it came to the transition for me, so I actually like jumped into my full time role before I graduated. Um, it was like a odd opportunistic situation. Um, so for me, the transition didn't really feel like much. Actually, today sometimes like it, it feels like a little bit of imposter syndrome uh, because you know you stay with the same, especially if you stay at the same place. It doesn't really feel like you're entering a new role. It just feels like you're entering kind of like a a new time period and things are. Like drastically different for you, so that's definitely one like difficulty in acclimating is like just knowing whenever things have changed. Um, I would say overall though it's gone really well. I mean, there's a lot of you know, changes in general. The first is like the the pressure behind not being a student anymore. Um, I think whenever you're a student intern, especially, you often have to juggle many other different things, so it gets a little easier. Um, there's obviously like pay and benefits and all the good stuff that goes with a full-time job too, so. Yeah, um, so I want to highlight, I transitioned from to a different company, so my differences might not be as, you know, relevant to full, intern to full-time versus like different company, different company. Uh, but one thing that I noticed was a lot more freedom. You know, as an intern, you can come up with ideas, but you got to go and get them approved and make sure that it's you know within the budget and stuff like that. Um, but as a full timer, I've noticed that either maybe it's in my position um, or my company. If I uh, display an idea, they have a lot more um, openness and you know um, drive to get that done. Or seeing okay, maybe that's a good idea, but maybe that's not what we're looking for. Let's let's take that and build on that. Um, so I I've noticed a lot more I guess openness to my thoughts. Yeah, so I think personally, um, the biggest change for me has been that when I was a full-timer, I'm responsible more for uh, kind of the production and work of other people in the office of the whole, as opposed to just myself. So I think when I was an intern, it was really more just about, you know, how can I make a good impression, um, you know, do good work, um, really develop professionally, and then get a good evaluation and find an offer a lot, and things like that. But uh, not kind of being on the other side of that, where it's my job, well, um, other full timers to kind of recruit and you know, choose a project that we take on for certain semesters and can we keep up the stakeholders and things like that. Um, there's a much bigger sense of, you know, the collective success is very important and it's also part of my job to ensure that you know, the candidates we get are good, the projects we take are interesting and meaningful and beneficial for the interns, and that those do well. And um, I think um, it's high stakes in a different sort of way. I remember I was in Chicago last week. I'm speaking to the people who fund our office. You know, they pour a lot of money into it. They basically tell me that uh, you know, we pour this much money per student into this venture. So we need to see you know, these kinds of results and this kind of performance from the people who graduate from this program and end up working at Morales, which is full time. So that's really scary. But um, yeah, I think that is a good learning experience, something I feel like I'm very, uh, very unqualified for, um, especially if I just haven't graduated. I think that it is a unique opportunity I really value on being able to learn this kind of setting, um, trying to be responsible for not only like my project team, but also you know, just uh, every intern and the program itself I research for. So I would say you know, it's pretty difficult, but I think I'm really grateful to be have, have, having had this opportunity. Um, good question. So uh, like I said earlier, I think connecting, I'm a big people person, and I think making the right connections um, is huge in your professional career. Um, so kind of going off of that, if like a, for example, a leader is coming to visit your site or your site director, take them out to coffee, take them out to lunch, um, kind of get to know them on a personal level, and then, um, you know, they'll develop, you know, I'm assuming you guys get along, you'll, you'll they'll develop a care for you and your, for your future. Um, so they'll extend all of those opportunities that you can excel in the future, um, hopefully towards you versus another person that they've never like met or heard of, you know. Um, so like I said, connecting and just taking that initiative. It might be, for example, um, I had a one-on-one -on -one with an intern the other day, and he told me he just scheduled a one-on-one, -on -one, an hour one-on-one -on -one with the CEO. I was like. I have never heard of that before. Like, what in the world, you know? But taking taking that initiative and just like, 
you know, worst thing that happens, she didn't meet with him, you know, but best thing that happens, she takes that hour and listens to him. Um, and that's exactly what happened, and now I think his idea is, you know, being acted upon. So take that initiative and make that connection, whether it be online with a cup of coffee or in person through lunch. Uh, my advice for mentorship is to constantly be an advocate for yourself. So um, there's nothing more important. You know, I, I feel like, I'll just ask a question. How many of you by a show of hands feel like the output that you have in your internship is measured by what you produce? So like, how many like new like things do you do on a daily basis that you can actually show to somebody and say, this is what I did? Like, don't be shy. Raise your hand if that's how you feel about your internship. Okay. So, whenever it comes to that, like, it may seem like your your direct managers care most about the results you produce, but ultimately, whenever you go into an internship, internship, the most important thing that they care about is your growth, and then the potential that you have to be converted into like a full time employee or or just be a continuing asset to that company, that's like their job. And so um, I would say just make sure you're always being an advocate for yourself because most likely, regardless of how busy it gets, that's the one thing that your manager always wants, wants for you is like for you to grow and to develop. That's the whole point of an internship. Um, and so like go bug your manager, go bug your coworkers, see what you can learn from everybody. Uh, that's the best way to learn is just bouncing ideas off of the people that you know are your peers or your managers. Um, and once you do get into a full-time role, I also like say this, make it a priority to find somebody within your company that can be a mentor to you. Yeah, I mean, I kind of just agree with what Eric said. I think that uh, hopefully you can find that there's someone in your company who you feel uh, has more experience, you know, has insight into kind of how your career should progress or how progress. And um, I think, yeah, the important thing is that you really want to make sure that you're really exceeding feedback and mentorship instead of just um, hoping someone reaches out to you and tell you what to do. I think that a lot of people, uh, they're not really looking to hear critical things or you know, feedback about how they can improve. And I think that makes sense in, it, um, in a way, but I think it's very detrimental to your professional development. Um, you know, other people will have insights into your life that you're kind of not aware of, and you want to take advantage of that, especially if you feel like that person is someone who really cares about your professional development and someone who made that kind of judgment. So if you have that, you know, that's great. That's something to be really thankful for. And you should really try to maximize it you know, by reading up with them, you know, having them, um, just setting up time where they can talk to you about your performance and your personality and how you get along with people in the office, things like that. And yeah, there are so many conversations that I had where you know, Craig told me things like, oh, why are you doing this? And then I, it's like, I didn't even know I was doing that. And I probably shouldn't. You know, so those, the, you know, those times are stressful for sure. You know, getting told those kind of things hard boss, but I really think they were impactful into you know, helping you develop into someone who's more um, complete as an employee, but also just as a person. I worked during the fall and the spring in my internship, and I would say setting a time on your schedule that says I'm working 100% from like 9 to 12 every day, or every certain days. Um, you know, that I think categorizing, you know, this is what I'm going to do right now, this is my full focus, that really helps me. Um, because, you know, maybe there's always, you know, I have that exam next week, or I have this thing due, you know, by the end of the week. Um, those are always going to be in the back of your mind. So if you really set aside time and focus, um, and especially during work hours, it's hard to reach people um, after 5 o'clock, you know. So um, if your schedule allows it, I would highly recommend um, setting, I don't know how many hours you guys week, probably 10, 15, 2, 3 hours a day, um, you know, concrete. That's when I'm doing my job. I would recommend setting aside some time with you know whoever your manager is or kind of whoever you typically report to, um, just to be very clear about like what are you not taking with you from the summer into the fall and what are you taking with you, and then having clear like expectations and goals. Like I think with the summer we all get so wrapped up in the forty hours a week and it's very like fast paced, get a lot done, all that sorts of stuff. But then you have your priority shift whenever the semester starts again. So you have assignments, you have exams, you have 
times you need to study, you need to do fun things, right? Like you need to take care of yourself. And so just being very intentional about setting those expectations with your manager before the fall and also communicating your own professional boundaries is something really good to do. I would also say um, sometimes during like the fall and the spring, I would find myself just sitting there not knowing what to do. Um, so if you have a certain like project management system or even like for yourselves, having exactly, you know, what am I doing right now and what am I gonna do tomorrow? And keeping that very well documented will save time from, okay, oh, I gotta find something else to do and just sitting there, you know, take full advantage of the time that you commit. Yeah, I think I really made all my points, but, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to I guess, laugh. yeah, it's, but, um, yeah, I think that um, one of my issues is that um, when I was looking at the ball in the spring, I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't very realistic about my expectations. So, you know, when you're working full-time in the summer, um, you can get a lot done. And, you know, you're always around the people you're working with, so you can just kind of yell at them across the room if you need something. But then I think things slow down a lot when your hours especially over here, you're not working at the same time. And you need something from someone so you might be blocked there. So I felt, I felt that I was really, you know, not making the progress that I should in the fall and spring especially. And that was difficult for me, but I think that I really came into it with unrealistic expectations, thinking that, oh, I can still get this much done on top of like my studies and things coming up and um, you know, other priorities in my life. But I think it's okay to realize that you know, your output is going to be you know, a small fraction of what it will be if you're working full time. But really just trying to maximize what little time you have, but not being too overburdened about, you know, about what you're producing. Um, especially um, if you're working with people who are different schedules than you, it's very difficult. Um, I was working with a team in Poland, and so we were meeting at like the most odd hours. And so you know, things were really slow, and I was really upset about that, but I think I realized over time that um, you really have to have real expectations for yourself. Like, you're also a student, and like, you know, hopefully you guys have friends that you guys do stuff with, and all these other things in your life. So it's okay to, you know, not be like the top performer per se, just as long as you're focusing on you know, learning what you can, getting what you can done within the constraints of what you can do in your life. How do you guys maintain professional relationships, even in the context, like if you've moved on from one company? Like, for example, like you've done some internship and then you can't continue for the fall for whatever reason you have or different say you have. And you still want to foster that relationship with your boss or manager. Because it is a it is like a comfortable relationship to have. Even if you're, if you're not going to be doing full time work after you graduate, whether you want to get a recommendation or just more advice or potentially even work later on if you're on down, down the years. So I would stop in really, really often um, and just, I would, they, they, the office used to be right back there. They've since moved, so that makes it harder for me. But um, the office used to be right back there, and I would just go past Sherry at the front desk, say, Hi, Sherry, and walk back and see who, whoever was here that I could find. Um, yeah, and now, like, when it comes to building professional relationships with, like, other people in the park, um, I haven't, like, done a ton of that yet, but, you know, I've had, like, lunches with site directors and whatnot with my boss as well. Um, that's, that's a really good way to just get, like, coffee or lunch or whatever. Um, and just try to, like, do your best to remember to reach out to them frequently and just, even if it's a, hey, how are you doing, or, you want a piece of advice on something or whatever else. Um, I feel like that's always really well received, especially assuming you've left that internship, always leave on good terms if possible, um, especially if you intend to keep that bridge you know, open. So. Um, so hopefully your mentor would also reach out to you and keep that relationship going, because it's a two-way street, right? Um, but basically what, what Joey said, you know, if they're in town, um, schedule coffee, go get dinner somewhere, um, you know, go grab lunch. Um, simple as that. Or if you can't do that, if you're not around, if they're not around, send a quick email like, hey, like just checking in, how's it going, you know, how's the fall going, I miss you guys, you know. Something as small as that, but very genuine, will go a long way. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, just to add on to that, I would say that you really have to make sure that you're being proactive about the relationships you want to really preserve, you know, like, um, once you meet, especially, it's not necessarily the person who's managing you's responsibility to kind of look out for you. And um, I also think, you know, leaving on good terms is obviously important. I think everyone in the industry understands, you know, it's a business, you might have other priorities, you might be working different jobs, X, Y, Z. Um, that, that's, that's just how it is, you know, but, but those are things that I want you to take personally, so you really should be, should be bashful. 
of like, you know, if you want advice or just mentorship or anything like that, you should always try to uh, preserve the relationships you have. It's a very, um, sort of small industry. People know each other very um, tightly, so you never know when those things will be you know, insurance on your career down the line. So um, I would just say make sure you're being an advocate for yourself. Like, um, it goes in earlier, make sure that you're being proactive about um, just communicating with these people and making it clear that you still want to um, be a part of their lives and want to interact with them. Yeah. I also think that people are in this business, especially people who work in the research park and tend to work with student interns, take a lot of pride in seeing the growth. I think it was Joey who said this, the growth of their students. And I know that um, you know we are in a position, we as research park, we don't necessarily get to convert our interns to full time. So when we see them succeed, we in other companies, et cetera, we take a lot of pride in, and, and feel that maybe we had a little, you know, a little bit of that success. Um, you know, that we contributed to. And I would say that I know a lot of the other managers in the research park feel that same way. So, you know, you're not annoying people wanting to keep in touch with them even if you're not their employee anymore. I think that people value that. Um, and uh, the other thing I would say is remember that oftentimes your manager is learning as much from you as you are from them. And so this is one of the things that we consistently hear from our colleagues across the research park that is one of the value propositions. So I'm laughing, you know, yes, they invest a lot of money in, in having um, the, the sites here, but I think they're also getting a lot of value in return from all of you. And that's both technical return as well as, um, you know, understanding, you know, workplace practices and other things like that because you all have different experiences from them. You all have had, um, you know, different educations from them, et cetera. So there's a lot of value. So I think, um, you know, summer's about over, which means um, a lot of you guys are going to start recruiting again pretty heavily. Um, so I think something you need to do in preparation is really think about how you can spin your experiences, um, not only for yourself, obviously, but really just so that you can, in a very concise manner, um, talk about what you achieved, what you learned, to interview words, and you know, to people you're talking to about potential opportunities. Um, like, summer is long, you know, you probably did a lot of things you can do, but um, when it comes down to it, you're going to have to figure out how to talk about those experiences couple minutes or even shorter. Um, you're going to have to figure out how to format that in your resume. And if you're not prepared to do these things, then you're really um, a step behind, I think, in the recruiting process. Um, a big part of um, kind of showcasing your value to someone who doesn't know you very well is going to be able to, is, is, is going to be your ability to show your value, what you did, what you produced, what you learned in a very short um, frame of time. And so I think you're going to have to think about um, you know, what exactly did you accomplish this summer? You know, how can you talk about that in an interesting way where you're not going too into specifics, but you're also giving the correct picture of what your individual contributions and your team contributions were. So um, I think that's something that you know, really stands out is when someone's able to do that well in an interview. Um, that really puts you a step ahead of other candidates. So I think before you go into applying for jobs and you know, looking at your resume and things, you're going to have to sort of interested, introspectively think about how you can best do that for your future opportunities. I would 100% agree with that. Um, I've, I've worked at career fairs before, and if a candidate comes up to my booth and they start talking about their experiences, the one thing that I know is that they're really excited and passionate about it. Um, if you bring that excitement and passion that you, you know, just learned to the next job that you're applying for, you're going to be a great candidate and you're going to go above and beyond. Um, so definitely practicing that, you know, getting all of that down, find out what was most rewarding about this experience. Um, and like I said earlier, I'm a big believer in people connections. So making connections with not only those in your company, but those in this room. I think what Research Mark does is a, they do a great job at providing these um, networking opportunities, whether it be on the softball field or here or through Hackathon. You know, you're all kind of working in your different teams, but they put you in this environment where you could, you know, lean over and say, hey, like, great at that, man, or, you know, something like that. So taking advantages of those, um, and hopefully in the future, maybe along the line, you know, five years later, you'll be like, oh, you played in the research park softball league? Like, wow, crazy, small world, you know. That'll open a lot of doors for you. So capitalizing on that as well. Yeah, I'll just echo both of their thoughts. I think learning how to tell a story about yourself is probably one of the most valuable things. Um, the other thing, too, that I would really encourage is as you think about how to move forward after the summer, 
thinking about everything you've learned that's new, maybe you've improved upon your existing skills, the best way to keep that fresh and continue to build upon it is kind of like an active learning way. So think about the ways that you can take the skills and the experiences that you've gained through the summer in your internship, and how can you apply those to your future work, whether that's professional, whether it's academic, whether it's personal. Always be seeking opportunities to continue to expand upon the skills that mean a lot to you, and so you know of the skills that are also going to add a lot to what you know, want to do in the future. Where do you want to see yourself? You know, maybe it's post graduation. Maybe you're getting ready to graduate, and you have you know you're, you're starting a full time job on or whatever it may be. Just think about the ways that you can continuously improve yourself in that regard to be you know the best version of uh, whoever you want to be when you want to be there. Google. <laughs> Google, YouTube, Stack Overflow, any form, I don't know. Um, no, really, like, also, the other thing, too, uh, it's even easier to take advantage of when you're an intern, but it's just people around you just ask a bunch of questions. We have an intern right now um, that works at the Gray Barter Innovation Lab, and I think every single time that somebody wraps up saying something, he's like, I have a question, like, every single time. And he probably asked like four questions before he's done. So Google, any other like learning forum, asking questions. No question is a stupid one, even if somebody else in the room, like if they snicker, be like, oh yeah, that seems like a simple answer. Maybe it's not for you, and that's okay. You're still learning, you're not where they are, and your journey is you know, individual to you. The only thing I would add to that is maybe chat GPT. I feel like it's a very powerful tool. Yeah, so um, I think that, um, especially at a company, they're very, um, I guess they're very um, proactive about, you know, or they, they want you to be very proactive about uh, trying to figure things out. And so something they do is that um, um, any course you want to take on any sort of platform, like LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, whatsoever, um, if it's under $100, like, the company will cover it, like, no questions asked. It could be anything, you know, professional development or you know, some technical skill. And so that's really useful. I take a lot of courses to take advantage of a lot of those kinds of things. Um, but I think the other thing that I think that I'm really thankful for is that um, we're really encouraged to reach out to anyone in our company, um, inside or outside of Research Park, and to just set up a time with them to talk about literally anything. So um, there have been a lot of times where I've worked on a project and we're thinking about new technology, and then someone will refer me to someone who's worked with it in the past, and we'll just talk for 30 minutes an hour, and they'll give me their experiences and how they used it, what context they used it. And so I think that. That saves a lot of time in terms of you know you not having try not having to try to figure something out from the bottom up, but instead being able to look at someone else's implementation in a project inside the portfolio. And so I think those kinds of things are really useful. So you want to make sure that you're asking around um, not only inside your um, office but also the company as a whole to see if there are any people who are kind of experts on a specific subject. And you know, hopefully you'll be able to find someone that's able to give you more insight other than you know, just looking at Google or using YouTube. Or um, thank you all for being a great audience today. Thanks for a great summer of professional development workshops. And, and of course, a huge round of applause for our panelists. So thank you all.